What's up guys? Fat Samurai Guy here, and welcome to the Movie Dojo, where we discuss martial arts cinema and action films. Today we're going to discuss the divine move, so here is a quick plot synopsis. A professional Baduk or Go player loses a high-stakes game to an infamous underground gambler and ends up framed for the murder of his own brother and locked up in prison. He trains himself how to fight during his seven-year sentence and vows for revenge. After he is released, he gets in touch with his brother's former associates to formulate a plan to get back at the gangsters who have wronged him. All right, so now I'm going to give you good, I'm going to give you the bad, I'm going to give you the badass. Here we go. All right, now let's start with the good. The story. It's an interesting revenge story that uses the game as the setting. And uh, kind of reminds me a little bit of Shades of The Hustler with Paul Newman, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. Mixed with a little bit of rounders, and I like how both opponents play off of each other, see who's going to make the mistake. So I thought that was interesting. That was something different. All right, now it's time for the bad. This movie is false advertisement, people. False advertisement. I saw this awesome badass trailer where it was nothing but fighting. But no, no, my friends. No, no, no. There's just a little bit of fighting in the beginning. And a little bit of fighting at the end. And a little bit of fighting in the middle. But pretty much 80% of this movie is based off the stupid game. And when there was actual action on screen and fight choreography, it was okay. I mean, in the beginning of the film, they set it up. I mean, when he was in the when he was in the prison, he was training every day for seven years. It was badass. It was gonna be a cool revenge movie, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, this is gonna be good. And then, time to play the game. I mean, serious blue balls, man. Okay, my thirst was not quenched. Okay, so let me give you a little example of what I'm talking about. Okay, so we have one scene where our hero sets up a game. So both components can play each other in a trailer, okay? So one of the main villain's minions shows up to play the game. He plays the game, he loses the game, he gets mad, he turns around, and the camera pans to the right. And you see the trailer doors open, and there's our hero standing there. And he comes up into the trailer, and it's just man oh e man oh man And I'm like, oh yeah, it's about to go down! It's about to go down right now! And it was just average, regular average fight. And I was just like... And even more insanely stupid was the fight. They were going at it and brawling, and the fight spilled off on the outside of the trailer into the street, and our hero won the fight by knocking the guy out. And then literally, I don't know what the heck happened, but the editor, I don't know if he screwed up or if the movie was planned this way, but the very next scene, I'm not kidding, the very next scene is our hero and the minion sitting in a freezer storage facility in a restaurant with both of their shirts off with the game in the middle and they're getting ready to play the game and I'm like, what the heck just happened? <laughs> it's like what, he just knocked the minion guy out and dragged him and threw him in the car and then drove him to this facility uh, threw him in there, took his shirt off and like kind of woke him up and sat him in a chair and was like, let us play the game now <laughs> I was like, that's stupid, that's retarded I was like, really? And then they have another lame fight. They could have they could have saved it there. They could have had a better, bigger, badass fight. But no, another lame fight, and then he leaves him for dead. And that's what was really annoying about this movie for me, because he's trying to work his way into the inner circles of the game playing so that he can take down the bad guys. But the thing is, is in the end, he ends up killing them anyway. So why don't he just kill them and give us a kick-ass revenge story that the movie set up for it to be? And now for the badass. Did somebody else come in and direct the last five minutes of this film? What the hell, man? Where the heck were all these actions, these badass action sequences during the whole movie? The end finale is a hero versus all these guys and the main villain, and it's badass! The fire choreography is good, there's really good brutal stunts, it's really bloody, it's awesome. Like, what the heck happened, man? Come to find out, that's all the shit I was watching in the trailer, see? I see what you did, damn it. I see what you did, movie. But yeah, what the hell? But it just wasn't enough for me to, uh, you know, give this a super excellent, awesome rating. Alright, so I really can't hate too much on this movie because it was really well made. 
the performances was good, especially by our lead actor. Uh, it was just a really good, well-made film, so I couldn't really hate on it that much. But, oof, the action is so disappointing. I was really disappointed by this movie, but I'm going to give it a fair score. So I give The Divine Move 3.5 out of 5 Ninja Stars. Alright guys, that's it for today. Tune in next time for the next Movie Dojo where we review Vengeance of an Assassin. See you then.